Kirby once described Pete Maravich as the frail, impractical-looking basketball player whose feats were firmly rooted in showmanship. As the product of his father, Press, he was breaking all kinds of scoring records in his senior year at LSU, where Press Maravich was his coach. It was a complicated relationship, Pistol Pete and Press, as Woody found out. His admirers think he is the beau ideal of basketball, Pistol Pete the Paragon. His detractors think he is a shot-happy show-off, a pop gun protected by his father, the coach. Basketball entrepreneurs think he is a pre-packaged legend who will draw like honey on an anthill. Whatever he is, sometime next month he will have scored more points than any college player ever. The diverse elements which can create disharmony among fathers and sons have filled a number of indigestible books. In the case of Coach Press Maravich and his son Pete, the drumbeat dribble of a basketball creates a tempo to which they can march in step. There are, of course, times when any son listening to his father has the look of a turtle in shock. But for 16 years, the Maraviches have worked, sometimes abrasively but always closely, on Pete's game. Right there, that's it, pick it! Sit up again. Who fouled up there, for heaven's sake? Okay. Miss! Miss! Interchange. Jeez. Interchange again. What the hell kind of pass that? Was that a hook pass sky? Hook pass sky? The results of the father-son effort are attested by a volume of mail associated with births and marriages in soap opera, a biographical literature as adulatory and extensive as political campaign material, and a nice assortment of trophies. They have achieved a degree of objectivity about the tangled but enduring web of father, son, player, and coach. Actually, there's a, a lot of pressure uh, that we get uh, uh, from the fans and uh, between the father and the son and also uh, it runs into the family really. When I was a sophomore uh, we were playing a real tight ball game and uh, he called a timeout and it called us over and I think it was a tight ball game and there was about a minute to go in the game so uh, he was diagramming a play on the floor and I was looking at this play and I just couldn't see it working you know uh, because of the, the certain defense that they were running so uh, before 11,000 people I just popped, I said look this isn't going to work, you know. And uh, he jumped up and hit me across the head and said, look, I'm the coach, you're the player, you listen to me. So uh, in front of 11,000 people, I was sort of embarrassed at this. and uh, So I didn't say much, and we went out, and uh, it turned out to uh, win the ball game for us. So uh, ever since that time, I've uh, considered just, just has been very exciting for me to play for him, and uh, I have no regrets. I kind of foresaw the future in that I wanted him to become a basketball player. And uh, by building a, uh, a goal in the back of my yard and shooting there by myself, he would come over and watch me. I would enjoy myself shooting. Uh, he came over and he asked me for a shot. He said, looks easy. He took the shot like all little kids. He threw an underhanded, uh, a two-hand underhanded shot, missed the basket completely. He said, why didn't mine go in? I said, well, because you can't beat the old man. And I said, I have to teach you. He says, well, then teach me. And then from that day on, it became a competitive a game with us in basketball. I've been playing this style of basketball now since for about 15 or 16 years. And uh, I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's different from uh, what everybody says. But this is, like they say today, my own thing. And uh, this is, uh, as long as, I've always stated, as long as I can uh, throw a deceptive type pass which uh, throws the opponents completely off their feet but we still get the basket then uh, why throw the fundamental chest pass if we're going to get the same two points I've often stated that I feel it's a spectator sport like anything else and uh, without the spectators uh, you don't have any athletics and what I try to do is just give the spectators their three dollars or three dollars and fifty cents a ticket worth of enjoyment and I feel like if uh, we can go out there and put on a show and also win the basketball game, uh, that uh, it's just great for the game, and it's great for the fans, and it's great for the team. It is certainly true that Maravich shoots in the fusillade style of a Western movie villain. But unlike the movie villain, he has a reasonable accuracy. Averaging a respectable 46% from the floor, 
while he is the country's leading scorer for the third successive year, this season standing at 47 points a game. Like many of those who love the trumpet call trample of the charge, Pete is perhaps not equally devoted to the trench-digging duties of the defense. But his passes, particularly the circuitous ones which are among his trademarks, delight him almost as much as the stringy whisper of the perfect shot. Maravich, who has trouble filling a pair of sweat socks, is frail for his height and his talents, and a summer of weightlifting doesn't keep him from occasionally going down like a caromed candle pin. This is Haywood Hale Brune in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Pistol Pete played in five NBA All-Star games before a heart attack killed him while playing a pickup game of basketball. Pete Maravich was 40 years old. We'll be back with more.